Hey everybody, Erica Sirwin here from Pink Becker Design. I'm excited to show you this project today. It features our new embossed gift bags. Um, I like these gift bags. I like the size of them. They, um, let's see, let me compare them to an ink pad. So see, they're not huge, but they're not tiny either. Um, it's not gonna cost you a fortune to fill it. Um, but it will hold something more than just a couple pieces of candy. Um, what I love about these also is that all you have to do is pop it open. There's nothing else you have to do. Sometimes we don't have time um, to make a uh, hundred, you know, intricate, adorable 3D projects. Sometimes we need something that we can pop open and fill, and that's what these are. So these are really great. Um, this week on my blog, I'm featuring the potted geraniums bundle. And so I use this to make a tag. I'm going to show you that. And, uh, hopefully you'll be inspired to add these to your next order because they really are great. All right. The first thing we're going to do is color our bag and I'm going to use a spritzer. Um, we sell these in two packs. I have filled it with 91% isopropyl alcohol. If you're I don't know what that means, but all I know is that if the number is too low, it will clog your spritzer. So I always try to get whatever the highest number is that my grocery store has. So that's what I have here, 91%. I filled it about seven eighths of the way up and added two drops of Melon Mambo um, ink refill, okay? All right, now the second thing that you're gonna need is a box. Um, this is one of the boxes I get at Sam's when I go, you know, just a box top where um, actually a deeper box might be better because when you start to spritz your bag, no matter how much control you think you have of the spritzer, you don't. <laughs> Honestly, the spritzer um, is wild and it will go everywhere. And so I always try to see where I'm at. Um, but I always have overspray. So protect your surface. I like to put it in a bag, hold it up kind of high. Um, you don't want a lot of uh, clumping of your colors as you get close. Um, I can never get a completely solid look, but I think that's part of using a spritzer is the look that you're going for is kind of a splattered, spritzed look. And I don't want it too dark, so I think I'm gonna stop right there and leave it like that. We're gonna give it a few minutes to dry um, as we create the tag. But one of the other things that I'm gonna do is to add some more kind of splatter to it. And I'm using sweet sorbet for my um, uh, geraniums. So I am just gonna take sweet sorbet, a sweet sorbet stamp and blend and add some more splatter to it like that. All right. Now let's set that aside to dry and let's make our tag. Um, there's lots of ways to make your geraniums. Uh, we're gonna stamp ours um, because I think that that is um, the simplest way. We're trying to make a simple project. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna use my Stamparatus to do two-step stamping on this. These geraniums are called two-step stamping, which means it requires two different stamps. Let's start with the flowers. I'm gonna get the flowers out and the greenery. And for the flowers, I'm gonna start with the um, solid image, the back side. I'm gonna put it down on my white and then pick it up with the plate. Now, I'm gonna use Sweet Sorbet ink for both the back layer and the top layer. And I wanna stamp off the color so that when I stamp this, I'm actually gonna have a lighter strength ink. So I'm just gonna put scrap paper there, stamp it once, and then stamp it again. So we have a lighter shade of sweet sorbet, okay? Now I'm gonna take that top stamp and I'm gonna lay it on there. Let me pull it down a little bit so I can see it. Um, line it up with those flowers as best as you can. It does take some wiggling around to get it right in the right place or as close as possible. Okay, now I'm just gonna stamp it in full strength right on top. Isn't that beautiful? I just love it. Okay, so now let's take that one off and I'm gonna do the same thing with our 
uh, greenery, okay? And I'm gonna start with a back, but I wanna make sure that I have enough space there for that stem to come down. So this is the solid, the solid um, image that goes in the back, and we're gonna use garden green. And we're gonna stamp off first, and then stamp it down. Okay, then take this one and lay that right there. Let's see, my paper moved, are we still good? I think so. All right, full strength, garden green. And stamp that right there. Okay, looks good. Now we're gonna do some die cutting, and not only are we gonna cut these out, let me move all of this, I'll clean all that up later, um, but we're also gonna use, we've got the two the two dies to cut the, the greenery and the flowers, but we've also got this, this right here, this kind of like clump of flowers, just random flowers, and I'm gonna cut them out from basic white, and we're gonna attach these to our uh, uh, tailor-made tag, okay, just to kind of give it some texture and it's gonna be white on white. Um, this is an intricate die, so I'm gonna take an adhesive sheet and I'm gonna put it on the back of my basic white. Now, one trick I like to do with my adhesive sheets is leave a little bit of a split there in between so that when I cut it out, there's a gap there for my fingernails or my paper piercer or whatever to be able to peel it apart. Sometimes when it's solid, it's hard to get that to peel off the back. So I like to leave kind of a space in between my two pieces of adhesive sheet. All right, so let's put this one down first. I gotta look and make sure I get that exactly there so that we get that split. And then we'll bring this one over. I think I'm gonna have to do it upside down. Let's see, let's move this down a little bit. Maybe I can get that in there like that. All right, now I have my magnetic platform on here. That's gonna help hold my piece. And again, I do this all the time. I stamp my two images too close to put both dies down. So we'll run it through twice. We've gotta run it through twice anyway for the second flower. So we'll do that. Now I'm gonna come back and go over that one a couple of times because when I put the adhesive sheet on the back of the cardstock, it made it thicker than normal. So I wanna make sure that I gave it enough pressure as I rolled it through there to get all of those little edges cut because we're not just cutting the outside edge, we're cutting the inside edge as well. Okay, so there's that. We're gonna do another one right here. Let's move this one out of the way like that and then we'll put this one here like this I almost got too close didn't I cut into that image almost whoops okay well good it stayed there we go let's run it through again a couple of times just to make sure that those flowers can cut all the way through. There we go. Now there's one other thing that we need to cut and it is the label. This geranium dies have a beautiful shaped label. So let's get that over here too. And I'm gonna put that on this piece because we don't need the adhesive on the back of that. All right, we are done with our cut and emboss. Let me clean up a bit.
Okay, let's put our tag together. Again, let's see if I can find that split in the adhesive. It's right here. It's gonna help me pull that off like that. And it's um, hard to see when you're doing white cardstock because the adhesive sheet is also white. So I'm gonna put one up like that. Okay, and then we'll do the other one down on the bottom. Like that. Now they're gonna overlap a bit, but that's okay. Because we're gonna take these and we're gonna overlap them mostly over, over most of the tag. Now let's stamp our sentiment here in Sweet Sorbet. And I'm gonna start with this part of the geranium and we're gonna use dimensionals. So I'm gonna put that kind of up high and kind of over, kind of leaning that way. Then I'm gonna take this one and I'm gonna put my dimensionals down on the bottom so that I can tuck the flowers behind it as well. All right, so we'll put that there. And then last but not least, let's get those geraniums and tuck them down like that behind that label. All right, now I have gotten a piece of um, the Heart and Home Designer Series paper. This is in our spring catalog <clears throat> and it's actually getting ready to retire. So make sure you grab it. Every piece has a white, um, kind of a wood pattern on the back, which I really like. I'm gonna cut a V in the bottom of each one and I like to go up the center like that and then trim them from the corners. This one is two by five <clears throat> and this one is two by six. The last thing I'm gonna need is a clothespin. These mini clothespins are from Walmart in the little craft area. Okay, so there's our bag. Because we use the alcohol, it dries really, really fast. And I'm going to, let's adhere all of these together so they don't fall apart when our recipient unclips this from the bag, okay? So just adhere them together at the top. And then we're gonna clip that on. And then we have this lovely new ribbon. It's a natural finish ribbon. And it's, I think, about an inch wide. It's very wide compared to our other ribbon. Let's see, what does it say? Seven eighths of an inch. Okay, so not quite an inch, but it makes great um, gift wrap, you know, bows for your gifts, bows for your gift bags. I like the natural color. All right, so just twist your bow around, get it nice and pretty, fluff it all up, and then cut those ends at an angle. Now here, I'm gonna use mini glue dots, but I think that I would recommend a glue gun, a hot glue gun if you have one. Um, this is a pretty big bow, and I think the glue dot will be okay, but just to be sure, if you're transporting this, giving it to someone, I think it would be best to use a hot glue gun. Okay, there you have it, you guys. Make sure you check this project out by clicking, clicking the link here on YouTube and go back to my blog. There's a complete supply list and measurements on a PDF, free PDF for you, as well as two other potted succulent projects. All right, everybody, have a great week. Let me know if you have questions. Thanks, bye-bye.